America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to summarize. In 1972, there were roughly 200,000 men doing time in state or federal prisons. By 2011, that number had grown to about 2.3 million, with roughly 68% basically poor folk of color. So I found Dr. Bob while I was an undergrad. I had come across a paper he had written with one of the students here. It was called Criminal Injustice and I think like the implications of mass incarceration on public health. I learned a great deal about the intersection of racism and its impacts on health. And I was like, wherever this man is, that's where I need to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Pasadena, California. As children, people were very jovial. There was a strong connection, at least in our neighborhood and our block. The folks living there have a very low socioeconomic status. But what was most striking to me was seeing my neighbors coming in and out of jail and prison and seeing how each time that they came back, they were much different. They weren't as open, they weren't as warm. There was a deep kind of sadness. That's what kind of got my wheel spinning, that something's wrong here. Mailman has a role to play in all this. We're really trying to articulate the public health voice in this crisis. My hope is that we'll actually provide the interventions that will actually prove that there are alternatives to incarceration that will positively impact the health of the communities. So Mailman, I think, has taken a really unique stance that there are numerous professors here who are working directly in the community, and so there's oftentimes openings for students to take a summer to work directly in these organizations. Last summer, I worked with Bronx Community Solutions. BCS allows individuals to do either community service or counseling and divert themselves from the path that would normally lead them to jail or prison. My practicum was on Rikers Island. They were noticing that there's some discrepancies between the injuries that people are presented with in the clinic and what's reported in the medical records. So I interviewed about 80 people. About a fifth of the people that I interviewed were adolescents, and that just rocked me, you know? So after I graduated, Dr. Bob emailed me. I'm sure you're familiar, we have this new commissioner. I mean, she's looking for a special assistant. Would you be interested? Heck yeah, I would be interested, because I'm like all in love with Mary Bassett. Dr. Bassett always talks about how it's her job to protect the health and well-being of New Yorkers and mass incarceration is a huge barrier in a person's ability to create and sustain a healthy life. So we have to remove that barrier so that people can receive all the other messages that traditional public health departments push. Here we're in the midst of the perfect laboratory to not only study the problems, we're also really interested in putting together a bunch of interventions that would deal with them. If you want to engage in the policies and the development of programs that will make a difference, this is definitely the place to be.